This is Louis Cavoris, and this is UNLV Arts Worldwide. Hello everyone, I'm Louis Cavoris. I'm the chair of the UNLV Dance Department. It's my pleasure to introduce a new curated series here in the College of Fine Arts. This is UNLV Arts Worldwide. And this was the idea of our Dean, Nancy Usher. So without further ado, I want to introduce you to our Dean. This is Dean Nancy Usher. Hello, Nancy. Louis, so good to be with you today. This is one of the most exciting moments I've had in my three and a half years as being Dean of the College of Fine Arts. Here we find ourselves living remotely and our wonderful College of Fine Arts at UNLV comes together collaboratively and we say to each other, what can we do to serve society right now? Mm -hmm. How can we share our work and even give people a more personal view than they might get in the gallery or the concert hall? about what are we what how do we how do we think how do we make art what's funny what's passionate what will change the world because indeed our mission statement is all about producing visionaries that will transform the world so how can we share with the world now all the goodness that we are and be so proud of our students and faculty and alumni and the guests we're going to have in this curated series. Thank you, Louis, for being here with me today. Well, Nancy, it's my pleasure. I, I also want to tell everyone, Nancy made a statement recently, and it's really stuck with me. Nancy, you said that the arts are an essential service. So tell me about that. The arts are really the soul of society. People need the arts. The arts really help illuminate our very humanity. And right now, what society is going through is very, is, very, um, is very sensitive, is very tender. We've never needed the arts more. It is such a joy for us to be able to um, bring people together and share our humanity with people and let people know that we're thinking of them, and the arts truly do bring us together. And the arts illuminates the best that society is. Now, Nancy, what do you think the artists will make and discover and create during this time? Well, I have a little story about a really phenomenal film professor we have that really um, addresses your question. There was a set syllabus, of course, all of our faculty do such a wonderful job in educating our students. And it was to go out and shoot films. And that's just not possible right now. So in adjusting flexibly and creatively to the current situation in which we're all living, the professor said, let's make a documentary on sheltering in place. Uh -huh. And so that is just a small example. I know that you're doing it in dance and all of our wonderful disciplines that are that are housed in our college are thinking this way. How do we make meaning of this time? I think that one of the great joys that we're going to have is that we're going to see that what we think about now, what we create, what we invent, how we innovate will really inform the way we proceed after the pandemic. And that is one of the most exciting uh, aspects of this time. You know, it, it's reminding me of something I've been recently rereading. Um, I, I, always, I always love, Nancy, that you and I feel like the arts are essential. And I was rereading Marsha Mielder Eaton's book, Basic Aesthetics. And she makes a quote in it where she says, our, our response to music to the arts and even mountains, they're not leisure time activities that improve our quality of life. 
but they give real meaning to our lives. So I, I love when you talk about the arts creating meaning. I think that the arts can lead the way in helping everyone make meaning of their lives at this time in our history. Yeah, Nancy, that, that's just really beautiful and, and wonderful. And Nancy, thank you for this fantastic idea of UNLV Arts Worldwide. So everyone, welcome to UNLV Arts Worldwide. We are reaching from Las Vegas, Nevada to the world. And let's keep making, let's keep finding meaning, and let's keep consuming art. The project is called A Drawing a Day Keeps the Pandemic Away. We created it on March 17th, which was the day when we realised that we weren't going to be able to go back into the museum and continue installing the exhibitions we had been planning to open on March 27th. People were asking us what we, as an art museum, were going to do to reach out to the community during the pandemic shutdown, and honestly we were wondering that ourselves. So we had an online brainstorming session and came up with the idea of posting a daily drawing prompt on Instagram. Anyone who wanted could respond to the prompt by posting a drawing and tagging us. Then we would add their drawing to our story feed and our highlights, so there would be a growing record of everything we'd received. At the end of the project, we would turn the submissions into a catalogue. Drawing a Day Keeps the Pandemic Away is not only something that gives people a connection to the arts community during the shutdown, it's also going to become a historical archive. It took us less than 24 hours to come up with our list of prompts. By the next day, our graphic designer Chloe Bernardo had created our title image and we were able to begin. Every day since then, we've posted one of her prompt illustrations followed by a response from an artist. That's our first drawing of the day. After that, we wait to see what else people send us. So far, we've received more than 500 artworks, most of them local or at least from the United States. But we've also had submissions from Australia and Turkey, and of course that makes us very curious. How did they hear about us and what was it about this project that made them want to join in? Anyone with access to Instagram can participate. We don't judge the drawings. We hope that the regularity of our prompts creates a sense of grounding in the middle of the very tense and mysterious situation that we're all in. If anyone wants to use our prompts to touch on some of the complicated feelings they're having right now, then we hope they do that. We also appreciate it when we can see people are enjoying themselves. We notice when the same people send us pictures every day, and even though we don't know most of them personally, it's nice to be able to follow their careers as pandemic drawing artists with the same kind of attention we would use if we were following the career of any of the artists we work with at the museum. Some of those exhibition artists have submitted drawings too. Sue Havens, for example, an artist who's going to be creating new work for a show in our workshop gallery in the future, sent us two drawings for the self-portrait prompt a few weeks ago. We've had people tell us that the project is therapeutic, it's comforting, it creates a kind of normalcy. And right now, those are the kinds of reactions we were hoping for. Thank you.
Hi everyone, I'm Teresa Divig, director of The Well-Balanced Pianist. I hope you are safe and well and doing everything you need to remain that way. I'm going to visit with you virtually on April 14th to speak with you about the wellness components of the Well-Balanced Pianist program. These three of our six core components include whole body well-being, healthy piano technique, an optimal mindset for practice and performance. I plan to leave time for questions and time for you to try things if you want. I look forward to meeting you on April 14th from 3 to 4.30 p.m. Stay well. And we're here today with Griffin Stanton Amiason who is a graduate of the UNLV Department of Theater. He graduated with an MFA in acting. As Lois said, hi everyone. Um, my name is Griffin Stanton Amison. Um, I graduated in 2010 with an MFA in theater from UNLV, uh, and I'm currently living in New York City. I'm wearing my New York City hat today, and um, it's been hard watching New York go through this pandemic. Um, that's my city, I, I miss it. Um, what what's it like in new york right now being in our little neighborhood uh we live in washington heights uptown um, we're very fortunate to sort of we're right by the river we have a couple parks near us so like we have stuff to do uh and a couple of the neighborhood businesses have sort of like stuck with it um so we kind of once or twice a week try to support them um but it's definitely been a period of sitting uh, with the situation and clearly trying to stay abreast of what's going on, but also like a uh, time to sort of look inward and figure out where our art can live in this uh, sort of strange time. Griffin, I love that during this time of social distancing, you've created a new project for yourself. Um, tell us about your Shakespeare sonnet project, what you call a sonnet a day in quarantine. I started this project, it was actually started, I can't remember exactly, but a few days after sort of we started uh, quarantining ourselves. And I think it was kind of on a whim um, that I was like, let me, this sort of popped in my head as a way to sort of track the days um, uh, and, and sort of give myself a small little project on the daily because I do the sonnets and then I write a, a poem to post it with. So it's like a writing and an acting project. Um, and 
I've always just loved the sonnets and uh, how much depth there are in such a simple form. Um, and it's been nice to sort of get creative as we as the days have gone and sort of figuring out how to keep them fresh and uh, yeah. And where can we find these? Um, where do you post them? Every day, uh, hopefully by, by the afternoon, uh, I post them on Instagram. My Instagram handle is at the Griffin essay um, and on Facebook on my profile. Um, and we started, we were definitely doing some more outdoors uh, than we are now. Um, and most of them recently have been inside my apartment. Um, yesterday I did one on our fire escape. Uh, and yeah, it's sort of changing the clothes, changing the uh, setup and trying to keep it uh, fresh each day. Griffin, where has your acting taken you? So sort of my journey uh, since graduating 2010, um, when I finished, I moved back to Philadelphia, which I'm from just outside the city. Uh, and I went to undergrad there um, and they have a really nice, vibrant community there. Uh, and I was working as an actor and a teaching artist uh, in Philly from 2010 to 2017, I believe, um, before moving up to New York City. Uh, while I was in Philly, I founded a Shakespeare company called Revolution Shakespeare. Um, we started in 2013, I believe. Uh, and I have since actually passed the baton to another artist uh, a year after I moved up to New York City. Um, I still sit on the board, the advisory board of the company, but now uh, I am just doing my thing up in New York City. Um, since moving to New York, it's been interesting to sort of the market of things has changed sort of the scope of the work that I do. Um, I've actually ended up doing a lot more uh, commercial work than I was doing before, um, doing plays, taking a lot of classes. Um, yeah, that kind of sums it up. Why the sonnets? Why, why would an actor spend time studying the sonnets? You know, as, as an actor, I, I feel an affinity to um, Shakespeare in general and these sonnets in particular um, because I love their simple poetic form. Um, and they're really complex um, and challenging linguistically. Um, so, like, I kind of do a little research project every morning to get a real strong sense of what the meaning is. And then I also try, uh, depending on which sonnet, to sort of add a little personal viewpoint behind it to sort of relate it to the moment that we're all experiencing or a moment that I may be experiencing, um, or sometimes just to make people laugh or, um, you know, feel something. Happy Saturday. Coming to you from the comfort of my own bed. Today, I've got an oldie, but a goodie. Billy Shakespeare, in Sonnet 18. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? <laughs> Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's lease hath all too short a date. Sometimes too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often is his golden complexion dimmed, and every fair from fair sometimes declines, by chance or nature's changing course untrimmed. But thy eternal summer shall not fade nor lose possession of that fair thou owest, nor shall death brag thou wanderest in his shade, when in eternal lines to time thou growest. So long as men can breathe and eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives life to thee. Purple rain, purple rain, Good to see you. We need laughter right now. So Griffin, one of the themes of this series is the question, 
what meaning will artists find during this extraordinary time? What have you discovered? I think in this period of not being together and um, I think I've, I think many people and myself uh, personally have really realized how valuable the times of being together are um, and how theater as an art form does that. Uh, and there's a magic there that cannot be replicated. Um, and also uh, the fact that what everyone, I would say the majority of people are doing right now is watching content, listening to content and all of that, whether it's theater being streamed or movies or TV or podcasts or whatever, um, those are writers and directors and actors and um, designers. And the, the, those people are invaluable to our society. And without that, the question would be, where, where would we be? That is the question. Where would we be? Our dean has said that the arts at this time are an essential service. And I love that. So as I let you go, we're going to watch one other sonnet. And Griffin, best of luck on this project. Best of luck on your acting career. And be safe and healthy in New York City. This is UNLV Arts Worldwide. We're reaching from Nevada to the world. And go New York. Who will believe my verse in time to come if it were filled with your most high deserts? Though yet heaven knows it is but as a tomb which hides your life and shows not half your parts. If I could write the beauty of your eyes and in fresh numbers number all your graces, the age to come would say, his poet lies. Such heavenly touches ne'er touched earthly faces. So should my papers, yellowed with their age, be scorned like old men of less truth than tongue, and your true rights be termed a poet's rage, and stretch meter of an antique song. But were some child of yours alive that time, you should live twice, in it and in my rhyme. Hi, I'm Lori Cobo, the Executive Director at the UNLV Performing Arts Center. Our world has changed so much, so quickly. Worldwide, the performing arts community has been affected in many ways. We are not immune to these effects. Many of the shows scheduled in our facilities have been canceled or postponed, including many of the guest artists that from around the world that were part of the UNLV Performing Arts Center offerings. In this uncertain time, we believe that the arts have the power to bring us together. We are working hard to stay in contact with you, even in this time of social distancing. Join us on our Facebook page and Twitter feed. We are providing a daily arts break at 2 p.m. every day. Think of it as your afternoon coffee break, but with us, the arts. Every day can bring new challenges and new information. We're doing our best to keep you updated as new details emerge. When there is new information, we'll post it on our website, pac.unlv.edu. When a show is postponed or canceled, our box office will email those who have purchased tickets to discuss options. We want everyone in our Performing Arts Center family, staff, UNLV, industry colleagues, and of course you, our patrons, to stay safe in this trying time. We are all in this together, quarantined, but together. If you need anything, please feel free to reach out to us at pacboxoffice at unlv.edu. We look forward to celebrating the arts with you in person again soon.